Thank you so much for your time, MEC. We do appreciate it. Speak to us about this new dashboard, why it was important for you guys to start this, as we know that many infrastructure projects are kicked off and sometimes they're not completed or they are completed and uh, a few months down the line they're falling apart. Well, firstly, let me say, can I still say Happy New Year? It's March, uh, MEC. <laughs> Okay, let me just confirm that, uh, yes, uh, we have announced a set of measures that seeks to address and resolve the problem of cost, time, and quality as it affects the delivery of um, infrastructure, particularly roads, which are very important for the people. And to that extent, we felt we should establish what we call the uh, Transport Infrastructure Compliance Office. And this office will be supported by the different dashboards that we have set up. We have what we call the project readiness metrics. We have what we call the construction site daily reporting tool. And um, the purpose really is to make sure that, you know, the, con the, the consultants and the um, contractors that sign contracts with us, we have a challenge that they don't respect those contracts. And uh, that is why we see poor delivery of infrastructure. And uh, we are very much confident that um, with the digital platforms we have created and the Transport Infrastructure uh, <coughs> Compliance Office, we will be able to crack the whip, make sure that the contracts are respected, and um, finally make sure that um, the people that we have uh, uh, appointed to deliver infrastructure projects in the province do so uh, in, in, in the manner that is consistent with the letter and spirit of the contracts. Okay, design. MEC, I think many people are asking why these contractors aren't uh, looked at beforehand. And I know there's a rigorous process that, that you go through, but you're saying a lot of them don't respect uh, the contracts that they are awarded. Shouldn't there be a measure in place beforehand, before it reaches this point where you have to constantly check, they have to send reports every week um, to avoid this kind of process going through instead of just making sure that you have appointed the right contractor for these infrastructure projects. So that's precisely the point and, and I agree with you. That's, that's exactly what we are trying to do now. Based on our experiences of the past, uh, what's happening in the country, what's happening globally, that's why we have decided that with the uh, Transport Infrastructure Compliance Office, even before you start, we have revised our service level agreement which would have to be signed, and uh, right from the beginning, the um, compliance office will actually make sure that all the boxes uh, are ticked and um, everything is ready, projects can move from one point to the other. So even before you take sites, in the preparatory stage, in the planning phases, we have to make sure that uh, the project readiness metrics as one of the tools will make sure that the projects move uh, you know, have a linear progression up to conclusion. So the, one of the things that has really worried us is that if you look at the private sector, when people build a mall, you'll see some retail shops, they say it will open on this day. Maybe it's January, they say December. That date does not change. So we are also saying through this compliance mm -hmm. office, the digital platforms we have said, gone should be the days when the contracts that people sign, the targets and the deadlines are shifted, are reviewed, and also there's a problem of corruption because we know that um, with the high levels of corruption in the transport construction space, uh, greasing of hands, uh, conflict of interest, instead of our officials enforcing the contract and the service level agreements, we have seen that they were weakness. So we have appointed an independent law firm which is not part of government to enforce the contracts that they sure. will be signing. And I can assure you the transport uh, infrastructure delivery space will never be the same. Hopefully, I hope that there's some progress there. Um, MEC, I'm going to ask you this. I always ask you this. What's the update on ETOLs? We were told by the Minister of Transport, we'll find out in the budget. We were told in the budget, no, there's still an issue there. Mm. Where, what is actually going on with ETOLs? What is the provincial government who have clearly said that, um, you know, the ETOLs are not part of the way forward? We have made that very clear. They are not helping us generate income. 
to pay for the new roads, to maintain the roads. They have never succeeded in that. Even before the people uh, took a very firm position, they were not doing well in terms of their financial targets. So from where we stand as a province, we have not shifted on the position. We were also told the e-tolls will be scrapped in the um, uh, minister's uh, uh, budget speech that has not happened. But we remain hopeful. We will not lose but, the hope. But what have they, that, to, um, but what have they that told you? Have you, have you asked them? Have you engaged with them? Have you asked them what's happening? We were told budgets, budgets come and gone. Still no, uh, no uh, answer with regards to, to ETOLs. Has anyone said anything to you? Well, um, we, let me say that uh, we, the Premier and, of course, myself with uh, Minister Mbalula, the Premier with the President, with other ministers, there is constant check about where is um, the process. And we are told that, uh, you know, the, the matter has been looked into, it's been finalized. Oh, yes. But, but I would like to say to the people of Houghton that uh, as the provincial government, we are really aware of the pain and the difficulty, the cost of living uh, that this brings on them. And together with them, we must remain hopeful because if we lose hope, then there's going to be a challenge. We are positive ETOs will be scrapped precisely because they are not helping not government, not households, not businesses, and the ETOs must finally be scrapped. In 20 years' time, maybe. Um, but let's see. No, no, we want them scrapped <laughs> I now. Know, right away, right now. I know. Um, okay. Uh, lastly, MEC, I do understand that there's a constitutional court ruling that has um, forced National Treasury to halt advertising when it comes to tenders. How is this impacting the Department of Transport in the province? Are you aware of this? Is this worrying you? Is this impacting the tenders that you're wishing to issue out uh, for the Department of Transport in the province? Let me confirm to you that just yesterday uh, I spoke with our uh, chief financial officer who's the head of supply chain about this issue and um, I must say that um, I am deeply concerned and worried because <clears throat> one of the things that has been affecting us as a department in the delivery of infrastructure has been the supply chain issue mm. and um, just when we thought we have um, unlocked that bottleneck in the supply chain and procurement processes came this decision. And what um, we are doing as a province in the department is that uh, we are together with the compliance office, and this is the discussion we had yesterday, we want to check what does this mean. Does the judgment apply retrospectively with respect to tenders that were already advertised with specifications awarded? Um, and so we are signed, we're trying to seek clarity because uh, if we're setting up the compliance office and we don't comply ourselves with the new contracts that we're going to be issued, we'll be in trouble. So we are seeking that clarity. The legal uh, compliance office we have set up is going to start on Monday to say definitely this can apply retrospectively, but we have been assured that uh, the minister and national government are dealing with this issue because it will, it will, pull, it will pull back the processes that we have had um, in, in trying to deliver infrastructure. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your time, MEC. We do appreciate it. I know that was short, but you've answered sufficiently. We do appreciate it. That was Jacob Mamabolo, who's the MEC for Transport and Road Infrastructure here in Gauteng.